I'm Andrew Ortlock, and I'm Travis Arm. This is Fisher Brewing. As fishermen, we have noticed the relationships between the length and weight of various game species, fish species here in Minnesota. Um, fish have a unique growth pattern not found among other land animals. So in this presentation, we'll create mathematical representations to model these patterns and analyze these graphs to learn more about the relationship. The reason why we chose this and why it's important is because there's a famous quote. Ecological modeling shows that even small gradual changes in body size in a fish population can have large effects on natural work. Morality, biomass, and catch. Healthy fish are really weigh more than unhealthy fish of the same length. Heavy fish result from a he uh, healthy ecosystem with an abundance of food. Therefore, a population of heavy fish is generally a healthy population. Kind of basic. Um, growth functions create a baseline for surveyors of fish populations to use. They can use this model to compare your classes of fish and monitor the condition of a, the fish population. For example, if the fish of a population are consistently estimated over the estimated weight from year to year, the water weight likely has a healthy habitat with like good forage and plenty of food and everything. But if it's sporadic, if there's a if it's overweight one year and underweight the next year, there's some outside factor that's affecting the entire population. So the history of fish studies um, has been studied for many years to learn more about the species and the habitat, um, kind of like to learn more about the fish in general. The DNR is constantly studying fish growth and stocking lakes, rivers, and streams to know how many fish to stock, but also to know if the lakes and rivers are thriving or struggling. So by that, meaning like they go through and make sure that fish are heavy and not they're really skinny and they're dying off. Uh, they use trap nets, gill nets, harmless electrical pulses to capture fish and study them, then they're released back into the water. The pulses just kind of paralyze them momentarily. After a function is created to model the fish growth, it can be analyzed using calculus. So we can find an average growth rate in pounds per inch by using a secant line across the endpoints of the function here. And we can kind of model the average growth rate throughout the fish's adult life. And then to find the average weight of an adult fish, the definite integral of that function is divided by the duration of the fish, fish's adult life. And so the history of exponential functions, which is basically our entire project, uh, the Mayans used mathematical representations of growth for various natural uh, occurrences. These functions were often exponential. Most math logo use logarithms and natural logarithms, and natural logs commonly deal with the number n raised to the x power. These functions created exponential graphs. The exponential function is one of the only functions whose graph is commonly recognized by people not familiar with math. math. Exponential functions have a practical application in real world areas such as finance, science, and even population growth. Other uses of exponential functions, um, they're constantly used in like, anything you can imagine. Most often, money um, banks use a lot of different exponential functions and calculus to create interest models and stuff like that. Um, the growth of populations all over the world can be modeled by exponential functions. They can also be used to estimate future growth and future population numbers. Um, currency also, like I said, used by banks. Uh, interest rates create exponential functions. As the amount of money gets higher, the interest gets higher and it becomes exponential. Also, depreciation is an example of a negative exponential function. Cars is a big example of that. They lose more value over time, but they also never really get to zero, so it kind of flattens out like an exponential decay graph. So the first species we studied was why. Uh, a little bit about them is they are medium-sized golden-colored fish commonly found in the United States and Canada. Walleyes are moderately, moderately aggressive, intelligent, uh, which makes them somewhat difficult to catch. Walleyes have superb meat fillets, making them desirable for eating. Additionally, the walleyes not only the state fish in Minnesota, but also Vermont and South Dakota. South Dakota walleyes grow at a faster rate than Minnesota walleyes. This is just a phenomenon we studied as we were researching walleyes. Um, after that, they tend to grow at a similar rate. 
We found that this is because of a greater presence of forage for young walleyes in South Dakota and warmer winters. So we gathered all of these, most of these from one website, and they're kind of like a table for people to use, like if they catch fish, they want to know what's the average weight that it would probably be. So we use these for our function. And so we created a basic conversion chart for calculating the average weight of the Minnesota walleye for a specific weight. A gra uh, regression graph can be used to model this data. Power regression of the form y equals ax raised to the b power is the best model for this data with the r squared square value of 0.9997. Uh, the power regression function below was created by a calculator where L is the length of the fish in inches and WL is the prediction of weight in pounds for a wallet of that length, thus the W. And so after putting all this in and doing power regression tests, this is what we found was the function of the graph. So this is a graph of the model function we had on the previous slide. It's accurate from 14 to 35 inches for an adult, which would be considered an adult walleye. Um, from this, we can calculate the average weight of gain, like as I mentioned before, on that interval, which is 0 0.710 pounds per inch for the walleye. Um, as you can see, the graph is concave up, meaning the weight of a walleye increases as an in at an increasing rate as the length goes up. And so, carry on with that, uh, we can also calculate the average weight of a walleye in the same interval, which is 6.398 pounds. However, the population because the population of the year class decreases as time goes on, this number is not representative of the actual average weight of walleye. This figure will be used purely for comparison between species as an ideal average weight. So obviously not every fish is the same for the same one. So the next one we did was uh, northern pike. Um, typically northern pike grow much larger than walleye in a similar lifespan. So they live for a similar amount of years, but they get longer and heavier. Um, they're typically released more than other species, and they're very, very aggressive. Um, they'll eat other pike, they'll eat that are almost the same size. Basically anything that they can fit in their mouth, they will eat. Um, however, they don't taste as good, and they're not as prized as many other game fish, so they're usually released more often. thus being able to grow larger. And so here's the growth function for the northern pike. Um, again, there's the lengths, and this goes up to 48 and a half inches, which is pretty much the max that you'll get in Minnesota. We didn't cover like up in Canada because they get up in the 50s up there. Um, again, a power regression graph, y equals ax raised to the b bar can be used to model this data with an r squared by 0.9999, which was very accurate. Power regression function below was created by a calculator where L is the length of the fish in inches and NL is the prediction of weight in pounds for another bike of that length. So there's our function. Um, this is again, this is the model from the previous slide. Northerns, uh, typically an adult, be between 21 and 48 inches, as you mentioned. So that's what the graph is accurate on. Um, we can calculate the average weight gain, which for the northern is 1.077 pounds per inch. And then we also uh, calculated the average weight of the northern pike using the same method, uh, or the same interval, I should say, which was 21 to 48, and that was about uh, 13.507 pounds. The next one we did was large bulk bass. Uh, the bass are much shorter in length than pike and walleye, but they're more circular. This means that they weigh much more than walleye and pike per inch. Like, ba like pike, bass aren't kept as often, so they are, they are able to grow much larger in size and get older. Unlike pike, bass are seen as more of a prize fish and usually handled with care when they are released. Bass eat similar foods to pike, but they generally do not eat the same portions. They eat smaller amounts of food. And they are very aggressive, but they roam out like walleyes do. So again, we were uh, we used these, I guess you call them x and y coordinates, and we created a power regression <coughs> graph once again to y equals x raised to the b power. 
with an R squared value of 0.9994. The power regression function below was created by a calculator where L is the length of the fish in inches, and L is the prediction of weight in pounds for a large or fast of that length. And that was the equation for the graph that we came up with. So this is the model from the previous slide. Um, large mouth mass are adults typically in 12 to 23 inch intervals. So from this you can calculate the average weight gain which is 0.6 pounds per inch. Our interval is quite short because they get a lot bigger but in Minnesota they don't max for a bass around here is about 7 pounds. Out in California they can get upwards of 20 pounds so that's why the interval is so short. And so we can calculate the average weight of large mouth bass. Uh, which is uh, 3.632 pounds from the interval of 12 to 23. And this graph is also concave up, meaning the weight of large off bass also increases as, at an increasing rate as its length increases. So next we have lake trout. Uh, lake trout reside in deeper, colder water, meaning that they're harder to catch than other game fish. Uh, they have a similar body to a northern pike. They're long and slender. That one's fat. But, um, lake trout are very similar to northern pike in what they eat and how they eat. Um, again, they'll eat pretty much anything that they can fit in their mouth. So it'll be whitefish, sculpin, rats, mice, and even muskrats. They're often kept due to their taste, but they are found below the Great Lakes area. Um, so they're not very common around here. You have to go north. Uh, they are very hard to catch, so they grow very big and they live for very long, and they feed sometimes up to 80 feet below the surface water. And so we created an uh, exponential function once again. The power regression graph, y equals ax squared to the b power, can be used to model this data. Uh, the r squared value is 0.9956. The power regression function below is created by the calculator, where T is the length of the fish in inches, and TL is the prediction of weight in pounds for a lake trout of that length. So there was our function. Um, we went up to uh, 34 inches because, again, in Minnesota they don't get as large. In Canada, lake trout get upwards of 30 pounds. One thing quick on this slide. If you notice, this exponent number has been very close to three for all the species that we've done. We actually found that that is common for almost any freshwater fish species, that this is about three. This constant out front is what changes the graph mainly. So the model from the previous slide is accurate on 15 to 34 for Minnesota lake trout. So we can calculate the average weight gain, which is 0.684 pounds per inch. Um, we found this interesting because their bodies resemble and their feeding habits do, but they grow at a similar rate to walleyes. So, and in Minnesota, both walleyes and lake trout grow to a similar maximum length as an adult. And like we said before, walleyes usually get to a certain length and then they just start getting a really big stomach, whereas lake trout they just get exponentially longer and they also get thicker, but it's more slender just like northerns. So that was kind of interesting. And so uh, we found the uh, average weight of a lake trout. And so this graph is also concave up, meaning uh, as the length of a lake trout increases, the weight also increases. And the average weight from 15 to 34 inches was about 5.904 pounds. So to compare the various species, just to put them next to each other, as, you, as we stated, lake trout and walleye have a similar growth rate and a pretty similar average weight. Um, as we cover in the next slide, pike seem to be by far the largest fish and the fastest growing. And bass seem to be the smallest. And it was interesting how they grow at a lower rate in pounds per inch, even though they're typically a fatter and longer fish. And so here we put all four of the graphs side by side. And so one thing that we can't really compare though is by looking at this right now, you'd say that bass grow at a faster rate. But it really depends on the intervals because bass was like from 12 to 23, whereas pike were for, uh, from like 21 to 48. 
So you can't say by looking at this that bass grow at a larger rate and northern pike grow at a slower rate. So by using calculus, we're able to find that northern pike have a large growth rate by far. Um, we believe they're able to get so big because they are such a predatorial species. Um, they eat basically anything they want and nothing. Fishermen and um, like you listed, pollution, choking, and that's dying from old age is their only threat. So here, this is a uh, big northern that decided to eat a muskrat and it actually choked to death because it was way too big. And that's it.